Once upon a time, there was a princess who found her prince charming. Once upon a time, there was an ogre with a talking donkey. Once upon a time, there was a girl stuck on an island who had dreams of being a voyager. No matter how much distance there is between us and a good story from the past, we always seem to remember them. Or how about these? Once upon a time, God created the heavens and the earth. Once upon a time, there was a flood and a big ark filled with animals. Once upon a time in a small town called Bethlehem. Stories have always had a way of sticking with us. They stick in our head and we can always recite exactly what happens next. The best stories can captivate us in the words or in the sounds and make us feel like we are there in it. But even the best stories always seem to come to an end. Cinderella lived happily ever after. Shrek found love. Moana went on her adventure. God rested, the rain stopped, and Jesus conquered death. There is always a nice and tidy bow put on the conclusion of a good story. As we continue our series that we have been working through these past few weeks of how to be the church, I want us to put aside the thought that all stories must end and instead envision a story that started so long ago that is still being written today. This past year, we have lived a story that we all desperately want to end. So as we are looking forward to this sequel, to this new beginning of being the church, we have been pausing to remind ourselves of what's important. We have been reminding ourselves of what it means to be together, to worship with each other, to care for each other, and to join into the life of the church. Today, my hope is that we can be reminded that to be the church, we are not just encouraged, but we are called to join together in missions and in service to our neighbor. Because when we come to worship, online or in person, we are often challenged to look back at scripture and to read the stories about God of the past. But when we exit worship and we join into missions together, we are deleting the conclusion of those stories and we are taking an active part of writing God's story right now. Our scripture for today is one of the many stories of how Jesus didn't settle for the story that was being told and jumped in to continue to write God's story by simply helping someone who needed it. It comes from Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 26, and it reads, One day, Jesus was teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and they lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, so he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. The reason that we as a church do missions 
is because it is the example that Jesus set for us time and time again. Jesus constantly used this kingdom of God language and preached that it is our job to not wait for the kingdom of God to be someplace in the future. He laid out over and over that heaven is not supposed to be some distant place, but that we should bring the kingdom of God to earth. We should try to make earth as it is on heaven every single day. And we do that by caring for people and making the world a more just place. There are three things that I want to highlight about this story that directly speak to how we should do missions today. First, for us to effectively be a church that prioritizes missions or service, we have to be willing to show up. Jesus didn't wait until someone reached out. Jesus intentionally didn't sit in the temple processing requests. But instead, Jesus' ministry was constantly on the move. He would show up with lepers when no one else would get close to them. He would show up and talk to people when no one else would give them the time of day. He had a way of always simply being there. You also had the neighbors of the, of the man who was paralyzed. They could have not shown up either. They could have simply left their friend to fend for himself. But not only did they bring their presence to him, they jumped through all the hoops. They fought through the crowd. They climbed the building. They moved the roof. They lowered the man. Their story of service was full of verbs. And it all started with the simple act of showing up for their friend. For us to be a church that does missions differently, we have to be a church that doesn't settle for just writing a check and strictly partnering with organizations. Although there is a place for that and that can be a good thing, we have to be willing to be a church that gets up, gets out of our seats, shuts our computers and shows up in the world. Second, when we show up, we have to be able to understand the ask. We like to think that people followed Jesus because he was a dynamic preacher and speaker with a great worship band that had the perfect mix of hymns and contemporary music for the young adults in the crowd. But really, they followed Jesus for the free health care. They followed Jesus because he fed them. They followed Jesus because he was actually doing something about what they really needed. I love this small detail in the story we read. They showed up with the man that was paralyzed. And what did Jesus do? He forgave his sins. You see, at that time, there was a direct belief that your sins, the things you have done in your life, directly played a role in your health. They would have believed at the time that he was paralyzed because he was being punished for something that he had done. I clearly don't actually know what Jesus was thinking, but I picture him turning to hear the religious leader's thoughts and waiting for their response as if to say, isn't that what we should be doing? Shouldn't we simply be trying to forgive sins and send people on their way? Isn't that what you think is the right thing to do? Now, I'm sure the paralyzed man was really thankful for his sins being forgiven and all, but that wasn't what he wanted. He wanted to walk. So after Jesus heard from the leaders and showed the leaders that his sins had nothing to do with his physical ailments, he turned around and gave the man what he really needed, not what the leaders thought he needed. And he told him to get up and to go. I once heard Tony Campalo speak, and he told a story about how he first started to be invested in one of the poorer areas of Philadelphia. He said that they had a meeting with all of these area leaders and they were asking them what they needed. And the people said that they needed jobs. So Tony got together with his church people and what did they do? They built a food bank. After that didn't seem to do anything, they met with the leaders again and asked what they needed and they said they needed jobs. So what did they do? They built a clothes closet. He said over and over again, him and very well-intentioned people kept putting they thought what the people needed over what the people were saying they actually needed. It wasn't until they were willing to hear the need and buy some property to put up office spaces for people to run their small businesses out of that they were able to really make a difference. 
When we show up, we have to be willing to put what we think is right and what is needed aside. And we have to do the hard work of really listening and hearing what people are saying. We have to be willing to not just write a community story for them, but instead ask people to come along and co-author the story with them. We must be willing to hear the need in order to meet it. Finally, we have to remember that God is already at work in our world. And the best thing we can do is show up, listen, and join in what God is already doing. In our story, Jesus was pointing out how although there were leaders who were not happy, he was already there. Jesus was already in the building. And he was going to keep doing God's work because he wasn't going anywhere. Rob Bell once wrote, that missions is less about the transportation of God from one place to another and more about the identification of a God who's already there. You see God where others don't, and then you point God out. So the issue isn't so much as taking Jesus to people who don't have him, but going to a place and pointing out to the people the creative, life-giving God who is already present in their midst. We need to start viewing ourselves not as missionaries, but instead as tour guides. Showing up, hearing needs, and joining in the work that God is already doing in our communities. We need to stop focusing on this idea of going on mission trips during some designated time, and instead doing God's work because it's another Thursday, and that's simply just what we do. Every time we are willing to do these things, Every time we are willing to show up, listen, and to join in with God, we are etching our name in the story that God is continuing to write. We are taking an active role in co-authoring God's story that's continuing to be written today. We just have to be willing to pick up our pen and to get to work. Did you know that the word Christian actually means little Christ's? When we say we are a Christian, we are saying that we are little versions of Christ. And I think this is beautiful imagery because we know what Jesus would do. Now, if we want to take our title as little versions of Jesus seriously, we have to go and do likewise. As we have been walking through this series, we have been pointing out very tangible ways that you can join in and be the church right now. Today, we want to highlight a few ways that you can begin being little Christ in our community. We have many exciting ways that you can work with other MCC members and other partners in our community. We are currently hosting the backpack drive that will help give school supplies to children across our community. Coming up in two weeks, you can participate in our interfaith build through Habitat for Humanity. MCC and five other churches have come together to give Ali and Fama their first home for them and their four children. They both fled unrest in Somalia and spent years in refugee camps in Kenya before coming to the U.S. After years of working and saving, they will finally get to realize their dreams of being a homeowner. Later this fall, you can spend a few hours packing food supplies through the Love the Hungry program. These supplies go around the world, meeting the need for basic nutrition and food. What's best about this event is that it's an event the whole family can get involved with. You also don't always have to go out in order to serve. You may have noticed that our campus is one of the largest green spaces in the area. It provides a place for many of our neighbors to walk in a quiet home for our non-human friends, such as deer and bird life. You can do something as simple as joining our green team to ensure that our campus is inviting to all. Another program here on campus that needs your energy and help is Buddy Break. Buddy Break was the first program of its kind in Louisville for families with special needs. It allows parents a few hours of time and gives their children an opportunity to have some fun and meet others. We always need volunteers who will be trained and guided in the particular needs of each child. We have other programs and opportunities as well. You can learn more by filling out one of these cards in person or online, 
or you can talk with Bill Wilson or other members of the Embrace Serve team whenever is convenient for you. When we join together in missions, we are co-authoring God's story together. It is time that we started to write something that is new and fresh. When we decide to join in and be co-authors together, co-authors with God, we can do great things in this world. It is a privilege to serve others, and I hope that as we start being the church again, you will join in with us as we do just that.